collecting moves forward. And if you want to keep moving forward, subscribe to the Audrain Museum Network. Hit that subscribe button right now and ring the bell icon to be notified of all the great new content we put up. You won't be disappointed. Subscribe today. Hi, and welcome to our exhibition, Collecting Moving Forward, Young Timer Classics. I'm Donald Osborne, and here in the gallery at the Audrain Automobile Museum here in Newport, Rhode Island, we are celebrating the cars of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Cars that have now proven through the test of time to have the attributes that make them collectible cars now and in the years to come. In our introduction video to this exhibition, we promised you that we'd be coming back to take a closer look at some of the cars in the exhibition, and we're doing just that right now. And the car we've chosen to focus on today is the 1988 Mustang 5-liter convertible. This is the car, the so-called Fox Body Mustang, that has really taken the imagination of collectors everywhere in the past few years. And it's a very interesting thing because the story of the Mustang is a really fascinating one. It's a car that, by all the rules of collecting, should not be a collectible car at all. They made millions of the first-generation Mustang from 1964 to 1966, and yet they're cars that really spoke to the soul of people in a way that other cars like the VW Beetle, the Model T, cars that were common cars, cars that were built in the millions, but yet still resonate with people. And that's the connection that makes a collector car valuable. It could be rarity, it could be beauty. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. However, it's the cars that really connect with people the way they live that really make the difference. And this is a really interesting example because this is the third generation of the Mustang a nameplate which lives on to today, a rarity in American car manufacture. And this is a Mustang that you might say went back to its roots. The original Mustang, as I said before, was a car that captured everyone's hearts. Even though it was really a marketing exercise more than anything else, it was a Ford Falcon with a really great sexy body that seemed to be more personal, more connected with the enthusiast uh, than the Falcon had been. The next generation of the Mustang went in a direction that a lot of manufacturers were looking to go in because cars were getting bigger and bigger, gasoline was becoming more expensive, and everyone thought the next place to go with a car was to downsize it, to look to Europe and to Japan and what they were doing with cars, and so we had the Mustang II. Now, the Mustang II today is looked on sort of with great disdain by a lot of people uh, even though they don't remember that back in the day, it sold extremely well, and Ford was thought to be very prescient in developing the Mustang II and bringing it to market at exactly the right time, the time of the gas crisis. Nonetheless, a lot of Mustang purists really wanted a return to what they knew the Mustang to be, this great front-engine, rear-drive car, comfortably seating four, and having a presence on the road. The third-generation car, which was introduced for the 1979 model year and ran through 1993, was a return to the Mustang that we knew at the introduction. And most important for enthusiasts, it was the return of performance. There was a time, very difficult to believe today, when you could walk into any showroom and buy a 500 horsepower whatever, that we thought the performance was really gone. The gas crisis, emissions concerns, and insurance crisis, we thought performance was gone forever. The introduction of the 5-liter V8 in this body Mustang signaled that performance was back and back to the Mustang in a big way. Now, this is called the Fox Body Mustang. Why Fox Body? The Fox Body was a platform used by Ford for a variety of mid-sized and full-sized cars, ranging from the Thunderbird to Lincolns, Mercuries, and Fords, including the Fairmont and Granada, and this Mustang. And during the middle of the model run of this Mustang, it was mooted that the next generation Mustang would have a front-wheel drive platform, which would be shared by Mazda. Once again, the enthusiast went crazy and said, no, we've got to have a rear-wheel drive car. And Ford listened and relented, and the front-wheel drive car became the Ford Probe, while the Mustang continued into production. This is the second generation of the Fox Buddy Mustang that has these wonderful aerodynamic headlights, which we first saw on the Ford Taurus. It uh, gave a very European look. Finally, American manufacturers were allowed to use a non-sealed beam standard headlight, and the designers went crazy. They had a great time with a lot of the designs that they used, and it gave the cars a very smooth, very sophisticated, indeed very European look. In fact, one of the things that I personally love about this uh, generation of Ford designs, and especially this Mustang, 
is that Ford was really doing a whole world car kind of a look. So the same basic design vocabulary could be seen in English Fords, German Fords, and American Fords. And I think that it really gave them a level of sophistication which today has proven timeless in design. This is a car that's very much of its period and yet has stood the test of time as clean, elemental design. Let's take a look inside this Mustang. Taking a look inside this car, you can clearly see that the design direction taken was a step above the previous generations and indeed the original Mustang. The design elements, the materials used, the fit and finish are worlds apart from those original Mustangs. And in fact, it's quite interesting that the next generation, they went back to a more overtly sporting uh, look uh, with the design because I think that this probably was a little too close to the Thunderbird. It gives an entirely sort of personal luxury vibe that is not what people were expecting from the Mustang, but again, I think makes this generation of Mustang something very special, a car that's sporty in feel, but also very comfortable, and something that shows a maturity in the design that I think is very important. One of the other things, of course, which is so important about this particular car is the fact that you have that great five liter V8 engine and a terrific transmission as well. So this car was really fun to hustle around the corners. Mustang still, of course, didn't have an independent rear suspension and wouldn't get one for many generations to come. But nonetheless, there was a type of sportiness that was involved in this drive in 1988 that I think was hard to find in a lot of other American cars. This is a car that not only is emblematic of its age, but I think very deserving to becoming the great collector's icon that it is becoming today. And we're very grateful to our member, Charlie Beret, for loaning this car to us and for sharing it with all of you here in the gallery and on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and be sure to catch our next up close video on a Young Timer Classic.